Hi Dublis, it's Floss from Couple of Dublis. Welcome if you're new, welcome back if you are a subscriber. In this video, I'll be showing you how I get prepared with any skippers to start on a Teresa Wensler pattern called Wedding Sampler. I'll also be starting this project on camera and tell you firsthand what my thoughts are stitching a Teresa Wensler pattern as an inexperienced stitcher. If that sounds interesting to you, then please keep watching. Before we officially start the video, I'd just like to clarify that both my husband and I run this channel, hence the name Couple of Dabblers. Separately, I mainly focus on floss tube videos and my husband JP makes mostly wargaming related contents. Together we also do gaming videos showing you the silliness of our Greyhound Amy, hobby hangouts and other random hobby contents that take our fancy. If you enjoy a bit of lightheartedness and fun, please join us on our dabbling journey and subscribe to our channel. Feel free to check out other videos that we made and don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like what you see. We also have an Instagram account which I'll link below. Okay, let's get started. I just want to quickly show you the app I use to organize my thread. It's called Thread Stash. You can upgrade to premium for other options, but right now the free one's pretty good. So right now you're seeing my threads. So that's the threads that are included in my stash. And you can also search for a particular thread you are after by the brand. And that lists all the color and numbers. And there's the project section. And for me, it's the wedding sampler. And you can put in all the threads that are required for this project, including the beads. In terms of the fabric or photos, I think you need to buy the premium version to be able to have that, but that doesn't really matter. And then it has the capacity to create a shopping list. You can add all the things you need into your shopping list. And it also has this uh, thread tracker. So it shows all the threads um, and how many projects this particular number is needed in different different things so you could just click on the thread to see details so this is a closer look of all these colors as you can see i have used the starter pack of any keepers to organize all these threads and um, i have included at least one of each color here so there should be 41 normal stranded dmc cottons here um, I just want to show you, so, I have got the pack, so this is from the stitching shop in US, unfortunately this is the only place where you could get Annie's Keepers if you are interested, this is like what I said the starter pack and it's 23 US dollars, it has 50 thread keepers with labels, 4 project slides and a 3 inch ring. I have used the three inch ring and like what I said, it's got 41 colors and it's not, well, it's about half full. So I suppose you could get away with more colors if you like. So for those people who normally stitch something with a lot more colors, um, this could be an option to organize your threads because when you... When you stitch, you can just, you know, hook it up onto something like your stand or whatever. And then um, you could just take out what whatever color you need. That's pretty handy. And it doesn't take a lot of space. And I will show you a closer look of each keeper. So you've got these very well-made sturdy plastic keepers. Um, they've got two holes. One hole is for the thread to loop through. Um, as you can see, so most of these are at least one skein. I have got one color that had more than one skein. So you can get away with having one, like more than one skeins on these keepers. Um, I think one trick, if you do want to keep more on here is to keep the thread longer 
so you don't have as much bulk up here then you can get away with more oh i think it's this one so this is two skeins on here you could you could still get away with it um but um when i was putting another one on it was it was slightly tricky but it yeah it's still doable so one um one of these holes is uh closer to this groove thing and that's what you need to put this onto the project slides or the storage slides so i've got one of these starter packs and i also bought the annie's keepers storage pack which has 300 keepers and 20 storage slides with labels so if you don't like the ring you can use the slides um each slide i think can fit 15 or maybe 20 20 of these keepers on there so there'll be plenty plenty of colors for you to organize your threads if your projects have a lot more colors um also the labels they included in the pack well they claim these are permanent but i have removed some with a bit a little bit of difficulties so what they recommend you doing is you use their permanent label for the actual dmc or whatever thread numbers and then on the other side you can just go to any like office supply stores and get those um, temporary um, stickers. So once you can easily put on and peel off and you can draw the symbols that are called for um, in that particular project you're working on. And then once you finish, you can just get rid of the symbol. But in my case, I didn't want to do that because that's another um, thing I have to prepare. And I'm just gonna, you know, read the symbol and then check what number of threads um, the symbol calls for and then just do it like that. So most of my threads are the same length because of the <laughs> the little um, I guess utensil that I used to cut the threads but I've got one that was very very long. Um, that's because I used a different length, just sort of, you know, eyeballed it and then cut it. So this one's very long. The good thing about keeping most of the threads similar lengths is um, Teresa Wenzler patterns call for a lot of blends. So when most of your threads are the same lengths, it's easier to, you know, not waste threads because technically they're similar lengths when you put them together. So that's it. Oh, also, if you're interested in buying um, any keepers from overseas, the shipping is pretty huge because, um, as, as I've said before, these plastics are very sturdy, very well made, which means altogether as a pack, they weigh considerable amount. So... Um, I think I bought this pack and the storage pack, you know, with 300 keepers. And the shipping was 69, 69 US dollars, which is a lot of money. But I understand. I mean, it, it really weighs a punch. So um, that's what you should keep in mind. Oh, I forgot to mention in the previous clip that um, this is not all the threads. Uh, I bought, well, for most of the colors, I bought at least two skeins just in case because unfortunately, Teresa Wenzler patterns, at least the one I got, doesn't really tell you how many skeins you might need for the pattern. So just in case, I did buy extra. Um, I'm going to chance on some of the colors because I did some analysis. Um, random colors probably don't get used as much in this pattern, so I'm just going to chance it and hopefully I can get away with just having one skein. But the rest is here. And I think if 
um, one of these ones on the capers are getting used up, I will just uh, cut it and get it prepared and put it on here just to replace it. I am hoping to show you how I uh, prepare my threads like this from the from scratch, I guess. So obviously when you buy from the store the DMC threads or whatever thread normally looks like this, um, you've got one side to that sort of buried among all the, you know, different threads. And then you've got one side that pokes out a little bit. Um, I normally start unwinding it from the side that pokes out a bit. Uh, we've done one shot previously already and it just started knotting. So hopefully this one will be more smooth. Um, and this is the contraption I use to wind my threads on. It is what JP used for his war game. I, I use it to make bases. So I use this part and that's the length I want. It's nice and solid. And this area is good to grab on, which is convenient for me. So here it goes for nothing. Okay. Oh, you just wind that up. I feel like it's gonna not. Normally, if you choose the correct end, the thread should not, or if it knots, it should not too bad. But accidents do happen, so you might have to try to get rid of the knots for a while. <laughs> There we are. Oh, there's a little knot at the end, but that's okay. It's okay. So I'm just going to cut the thing here at the bottom. And that's pretty much the length I will have. And this is color 778. So I'll just move it aside. Try to put threads in. Ooh, it's a bit tight, isn't it? Mm. Because I didn't keep my individual length very long. That means I have a lot of bulk to work with. If you want to keep your threads longer, then that means you don't have as many of these things. Mm. So then it's easier to loop through, but that's still okay. So that's two skeins of seven, seven, eight. And that's how I cut my threads and wind it up onto these Annie's Keepers. Mm. That helps you. So we've talked about threads, now let's talk about fabric. As you can see from the picture, it is longer than it's wide. So that's the orientation of my fabric, right? And obviously I did not iron it, so don't judge me. Well, if you judge, then I don't care. Um, then, because I've cut my fabric myself, so I know from the lengthwise, I have plenty of space. And I've got the 32 count Platinum Belfast Linen from Zweigard, as the pattern has suggested. So the size of the actual stitching part will be that. So 10 and a half here roughly or we can be slightly more generous so that's the length of the stitched fab uh, stitched bit as you can see I have a lot of excess so I'm not worried about the length then in terms of the width it's eight and three quarters so let's say nine as you can see, in terms of the width, I don't have as much leeway. 
So that's sort of in the middle. So I think I am going to start roughly here. Maybe I'll leave the margin. I've got my water soluble pen here, so I'm just going to mark it off roughly. I will start here. So roughly here. So people always ask where you should start when you have a project. If you start with a kit, because kits generally pretty stingy with how much fabric they can give you. So you always start with a middle and that will ensure you always have enough um, edge to work with at least. So you won't have the situations where you're stitching and turns out this is the edge of you know your your stitching area so you don't actually have enough fabric to to count for that but if you're preparing the fabric yourself most likely as long as you know you've left enough fabric to work with you can start from any of the corners and that's where i'm gonna start on the left Okay, so now I've decided to start there. That's my starting point, And I will just show you. It will be here. The border. Now, I am going to use just a very cheap plastic hoop to assist with my stitching. Um, so, I'll try to make sure I, I will, um, I guess, put the fabric into the hoop in such a way that I can at least get to the starting point that I've marked. Will be a bit tricky because I don't have as much margin on the on the width. I'm just trying to Get more fabric in. Now I can sort of start tightening it. Try to get more fabric in. Tighten it a bit more. If you've left a lot of excess on the edge, you wouldn't have as much of difficulty putting it through a hoop as me. So most likely I'll have to This fabric is very sheer. Unfortunately, I've got all this excess. I'll just leave it hanging when I stitch. Um, some people get grime gauze, which is like a little cover you can have on top of your either frame or hoop. And that can contain your excess fabric. But in my case, I'm just going to let it hang like that. And that's how you put it into a hoop. Okay, I think I've done enough preparation here. Two um, needle minders, some uh, John James Petit Needles 28, size 28. I've never used these. Um, I've never used 28 size or the petite ones. Hopefully they're all right. Um, that's still my starting point and that's the orientation of my pattern. Uh, okay, obviously I'm going to do the first pillar thing. So starting point here and according to my list, 
I need. Uh, yep. I'm not sure whether you can see this, but I've got the color I need. Very easy. So this pattern asks for two strands of thread over two. So I can use my loop method. Yeah, I have to say, unfortunately, so far, I don't really like this petite needle. And I think because I chose 28, it makes the thread twist like crazy. And uh, I'm so used to the normal length needles. This one gives me the feeling of I accidentally broke it in half and I'm just make making do. It is a very strange sort of feeling holding one of these. Mm. But I'll, I think I just need to get used to it. So I've done this border. Mm. I've done this border. I think I'm going to start working on the floor or this colorful square thingy. There's a couple of square that actually um, use the same color. I'm just gonna fish them out. Okay, I think I've done all, all this color in this square. 
Yeah, sorry, my stitches are not the prettiest. But hey, you can never be 100% perfect. I did say I'm inexperienced. So you can't criticize me. You can't criticize me too much. Um, let's choose another color. Maybe this time it's going to be a blend. Most likely it will be. Okay, unfortunately this blend is not used very much here. Let's count. I'm gonna pause this just to watch it to make sure everything's on there and then I'll decide whether I want to keep filming or not. Mm -hmm. See you in a bit! As you can clearly see I actually changed my setup because it is so uncomfortable where I was doing stitching before because um, I thought it might be good for filming so I ended up stitching at the dining table uh, but it was it was hard to see the lighting wasn't great um, and the progress was so slow because you know I was worried about the camera angle but I also couldn't see very well so I had to move this hoop very close to me all the time um, so I was there stitching for quite a while actually but I think more than an hour but I don't think a lot of a lot of the I guess filming can be used because they're just they're not good quality so I am stitching um, at the sofa now lying down with my blanket on and I'm quite happy right now <laughs> I should have done this a while ago and hopefully the progress will be a bit more true so what you saw I mean I am a pretty slow stitcher I've seen some people speed they are crazy I just I can never imagine myself being so fast the needle going um, up down up down but what you saw before was definitely not my true speed. That was just every stitch was a struggle. Anyways, so I think that's enough for this one also.
as you guys can see, hopefully, um, I am trying to obviously at least finish this square. Um, my original plan was, I know there are a lot of blends, but I'm hoping once I get something started, uh, I finish this square and then maybe somewhere else I can park the blend. Now I've got this one already hanging because I can't find any other stitches with this particular blend in any close proximity. But now I've got another one, which is still okay technically. But the next stitch I'm gonna do has another blend that only has one stitch in this square. So now I don't actually know what I what I'm gonna do. Okay, just then had a little bit of crisis because of all the blend situation. I definitely did not expect this little square would have so many blends and I definitely wasn't prepared. Lucky I remembered I had a UFO kit with some, you know, the cardboard thread organizer thing. So I got rid of all the threads on there and did this sort of thing on a whim. And that should be able to solve the situation. Okay.
Okay, so the original plan was I could finish this square and right afterwards I could talk about how I feel so far, my experience. But I definitely underestimated how time consuming the pattern could be, how many blends. So I think I'm going to stop for tonight. I've been stitching on this long enough. Our four hours already and I still haven't finished this square. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is stop here and hopefully finish this area tomorrow and then I guess do a little summary of my overall experience stitching this section. For now, bye! Hi guys, welcome back. So today is 9th of August, the Monday. When you saw me stitching, that was Saturday. So I couldn't finish stitching everything within this square on Saturday. I actually filmed for about three hours. Like what I may have said in the stitching video, my normal stitching speed is pretty slow, but on camera it's even slower because I had to worry about whether this shot's going to be in the camera and also how I would stitch. Um, there was a lot more to consider, so I would stitch a bit more slowly. But um, three hours, I couldn't get this whole thing done. So I finished stitching on Sunday and I was... Um, editing pretty much all day on Sunday as well because I wanted to compress the three hours of content of me stitching but I also wanted to leave enough for you to see that you know I was going through the process of stitching or if I have encountered anything I guess tricky I wanted to show in the video clips as well so I'm just going to zoom in onto my stitching, just so you can see. Obviously, the stitches are not laying as well as they could be. And when I could park, I started moving in the horizontal direction. Please focus. Just so I don't have to, you know, put the threads away. Um, I did not enjoy stitching this section um i mean i had to start somewhere and the left corner seemed like a good way to start which is this area so that seemed like a good way to start but turns out that particular section had a lot more colors so the outer square has so it's 20 by 20 the inner bit is 12 by 12. And I roughly did some counting. Um, in these little, like this little area, there were about 26 different colors and 12 blends. So as someone who did some blends, but not, to this extent, on Saturday, I was pretty much in a manic state. Eventually, I just gave up. I was expecting blends, but I wasn't expecting so much at the first instant. So, my original plan was, okay, if there's a blend, I would start it, and then I would try to find the same blend somewhere else, just to park it, instead of putting it back somewhere but unfortunately most of the blends that occur here don't have any any other stitches in close proximity to this one so I parked well I parked the first blend um with a needle still threaded on my needle minder but then when the second one happened, I just, I didn't know what to do. So I had to make shift 
and came up with this. So I ended up creating the symbols and putting all these uh, blends on here. So I think there are yeah, nine on here and three I parked. Uh, I'm not, because I haven't really finished editing, so I'm not sure what the final results would be of me stitching. But it was definitely a journey. And um, I guess as first hand, my experience was not fantastic. I feel like it's definitely not a very relaxing stitch because there was a lot of counting involved. I was using the needle and was counting multiple times because I didn't want to make a mistake, especially when I was sort of color completing within the square because they were sometimes very scattered. So um, I guess first suggestion when you do Teresa Wenzler projects is uh, make sure you have a storage system for all the blends once you've finished using them in a particular area. Something like this. Um, obviously, there are more professional ones. This was just, you know, I had to come up with something on the spot. Um, I think there were Lorenz thread cards that looked look like this um obviously more professional and then you just draw on it and loop your thread across or originally i thought about using this but unfortunately this was in use um so this is the packle organizer it might be a bit of a waste because you you might just have you know one length for each symbol but yeah but unfortunately, I couldn't use this one because this was in use for um, the neural stem cell electron my microscope for my husband. Um, I had this thought of, you know, removing everything, put them on the um, Annie's Keepers project slides, but it's too much work. So I just left it like that. Um, so this is the pa pa like Paco thread organizer. They've also got a Paco needle organizer. Um, so instead of these things, they have a dedicated area for you to stab the needle in. Um, so that requires a lot more needles. I don't have that many needles. So if you know you have enough and you want to take on this Teresa Wensler project, that could be a pretty good option. Um, just, you know, pre-thread your needle, make sure you get all the blends ready, put uh, all the symbols on the, the puckle cards and then just, you know, stab them through. So when you're stitching or, you know, okay, I need this blend, you just take the needle and then start stitching. And then once you've finished that section, you just put the needle back. That will be pretty handy too, but um, I haven't got the budget to buy one of those. So for now... This would do. Or if you're interested in um, Annie's Keepers, I think they also have a Needle Keeper. I don't really know how that works, but I think it had something to do with those slides as well. Somehow you just slide it across and you can park your needle there. Um, that could be an option as well. Um, yeah. So I haven't really decided how much or how often I want to stitch this project because like what I said, you can't just suddenly feel like stitching it. You need to get mentally prepared to count, to deal with all the color changes um, and deal with blends. But in saying that, I think this section, so this section going across is not as bad as this little square and also when I was stitching this it was it was all right it was kind of relaxing so maybe when I'm in a less optimal stitching state 
I could manage to stitch this because it's just one color. Maybe. So I am also thinking, because I haven't really decided about the Marla situation, so that's apparently satin stitch. So maybe I want to do some kind of satin stitch to complete this area on camera. I have not decided what sort of video I would like to experiment with. But um, for now, that's all I have. As a little summary of my Saturday and Sunday stitching experience. Uh, now for me, the next thing to do is to figure out how I want to edit. So yesterday when I was editing, I somehow, I somehow compressed one hour of stitching into about, I think, less than 10 minutes. I don't mind um, editing, but um, I don't know, like days of editing is too much work. But um, if, if it makes the whole thing look good, I don't mind. I don't, I don't hate editing, yeah. And I always create so much more work for myself anyway, so whatever. Um, because I haven't finished editing, I don't know how I'm gonna structure this whole video. I'm assuming the next thing is I will give you some bloopers because, man, the two little uh, household members made a lot of noise while I was stitching. Uh, well, I guess this is where I will leave you. I will keep tagging along whenever I feel like it whenever I'm mentally prepared. Um, I hope you enjoyed my video. Whatever it's going to turn out to be. However it's going to turn out to be. And I will randomly show you my progress on this project. I hope my final results is good, but I don't know. If you have any questions or you have any advice for me, welcome. Welcome to give me anything in the comment section because I am scared and I am worried about this one. Um, lucky I left myself enough time to complete it. I, yeah. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful um, and you enjoy what you're stitching as well. Make sure you subscribe, you like my video, you check out all my other contents as well, and happy stitching! Bye! Do you want to walk? Come on! You don't tell her what to do. She's her own boss.